worse, but you know, he was he was a real gent. So um, that that would be a highlight. I mean, so when you, when you meet people like that and they're really nice, or they they they're nice people and they're friendly, you, you that that makes their success better, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it's it's that's a fine point to sort of sum up what rugby what is so great about rugby league. Sort of wrap up our chat about. 2018 uh, we'll now go on to look forward ahead to what's going to happen in 2019 right james i'll, um, I'll run sure. through the outs and ins first sure uh, and then we'll uh, we'll have a go to, uh, talk through some of the key questions maybe so the outs are dupont anderson drinkwater thornley and yaha um the ins are sam tompkins matty smith and matt whitley so three very capable players that, that are coming in with lots of Super League experience even though Matt Whitley's only young he's played three years now in, in Super League and obviously in Sam Tompkins you're talking about a real champion player but one of the things you started to hint about before <laughs> is who's going to play where <laughs> yes yeah especially in that I mean okay you've lost two wingers in Thornley and Duport but they didn't really play that regularly last year and um, in Duport's case, he hasn't regularly played for three or no. three or four years. Um, I wonder whether Jaha might be one of those players that disappears to a, that other sport and then comes back fairly quickly. I don't know. He hasn't. I do keep an eye out, and he's not been playing super regularly for Ajon, I think it is. Um, well, let's hope so. so whether he's to show promise when he was uh, fighting for a contract in another sport. <laughs> Typical, wasn't it? He suddenly looked like the beast that, that we all thought he can be. But, you know, I suppose Mead um, will, will play on one wing. Fingers crossed Jody Broughton will have a good run with fitness. So he's OK. But then, yeah, you've got Tompkins, Gigo, Mead, Smith to, to try and accommodate. And I wonder whether there is numbers in that area because I wonder whether even the coach isn't sure that Matty Smith's got a, a full season in him. When he, when he plays, he, I'm one of those people that thinks when he plays, he, he always impressed me. But He's a huge competitor. He, he doesn't, yeah. Yeah, doesn't play enough games, does he? And that's that's the, that's the risk you get and you, you just hope that because Tompkins is, has played all over the recently, hasn't he? He's, he's, he's been you know, pretty much in every, and certainly for England in the last few weeks, he was all over well, the Well, I park. think I was going to say, do you think that's kind of given... Mac, made McNamara's choice almost a little bit easier with how Tompkins played pretty well in the halves for England and has had pa- periods in game in, in there for Wigan. Probably didn't do his best work there for Wigan in 2018. But for England, he looked like a, a real good halfback still. Like the player that we saw come through 10 years ago playing in the halves can still do that in the half, maybe not as quick. So do you think it's going to be... Gigo at one, Tompkins at six, Smith at seven. That would make sense, wouldn't it? That would make sense because I think, although again, there's talk that, that Gigo can come in and, and get involved in the, in the play a bit more, but I think he's a he's a pretty useful weapon to have, and I actually think defensively he's come on a lot as well. So I would leave Gigo, you know, in the full back just because he can offer a little bit of something when you haven't got the ball as well and I think everyone remembers that it was like like a rugby league strictly come dancing moment when he took that bouncing ball in goal against Warrington a couple of years ago and, and did that fancy little step to get out so he's got the ability not to to get trapped in goal and I think he's probably quicker off the mark than Tompkins whereas if Tompkins is involved you know when the game when the play's restarting after a tackle I, I, he's got a great vision with his kicks and if he can he, he use that sort of vision with, with his passing and to you know try and make forward movement I think that that's a pretty you know that's a pretty potent thing to have in your, in your, in your armoury and maybe he'll interchange with Matty Smith to try and keep Matty Smith a bit fresher and a bit fitter and you know they'll, they'll do an equal amount of work with the ball that's, that's probably my theory but do you think hey, I'm not a coach obviously like <laughs> Back at the top, we talked about how Catalan spent a lot of money for 2018. With Sam Tompkins coming in, that spend hasn't gone down, let's face it. Um, no. So, do, do you think overall this is a squad that is a top five squad with, with experience of people having won and bringing in other people with winning experience? Do you think this is a top five squad and do you think that's a minimum standard to reach for, for Catalan in 2019? Well, that's a toughie. It's certainly the minimum standard they should expect for, for 2019, definitely, with the, the players that, that they've got. Um, it's, it's whether, it's whether the, the rest of the squad can, can back it up. And 
that that's where that's where my concern kind of lies. My concern doesn't lie with if Matty Smith gets injured because you know there, there's plenty of, of, of talent around the, that that area that that can fill in. It's more if you suddenly lost I don't say say Casti and Battieri for an extended um, period. What is how are how are they actually gonna how how good are they going to be at keeping the points against down and how how good are they, the the players that come in going to be at getting them some carries and actually that uh, further up the field has a few older players in it doesn't it with Casti Battieri's around the thirty mark um Ma- Ma- Sam Mo is not young Macalorum's up there as well um, yeah. you know so so yeah and Greg Bird obviously is going to be one of the yeah. oldest players in the league next year so so there is some age there so maybe that's one concerning area but I still think you've got a top five squad there so uh, let's uh, let, let's be let's be positive I mean excited. hopefully it's a <laughs> well and, and you think as well that we've took you know Wigan one of Wigan's better players and they've lost other players elsewhere you know St Helens have lost Ben Barber Leeds are rebuilding so you look at uh, you know, you want us to be in the top five because we're playing brilliantly. But some of the other sides around Catalans have got worse issues to to kind of face than you know than an aging forward pack, I suppose. So yeah, I feel cautiously cautiously optimistic. I mean, I'm optimistic as well because of the fact that that Jason Chan, how whatever he's director of rugby football management or whatever convoluted job title has got, has said in the local press in the last sort of week or so that he that that, that business isn't necessarily done. And I wonder if maybe if a world-class winger or, or, you know, a decent NRL standard winger did become available, whether they would look to find the money for that to, to maybe bring in a bit more bit more point scoring potential. Someone to finish off what rather Tompkins than... and McAlorum and Smith create, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's probably a, that's probably a fair assessment. I think definitely a fair assessment that, that I think they're going to go at teams and, and try and obviously score more points than, but you know what I mean? They're going to try and blitz teams rather than rely on, on a tight defense because I still don't necessarily think they've got the players over a season that, that will, that, that can keep teams to sub 20. I bet if you looked at the stats last year, probably more than 50% of their games, they shipped 20 points or more. And that's where, that's where a champion team wouldn't necessarily, you know, remove points. But if Catalan can, yeah, score 30 each week then conceding 20 doesn't matter does it no exactly yeah that's that's a fair point but you know and that makes it quite exciting for what's going to happen on the pitch and hopefully we do see more exciting games from Catalan in 2019 because over the last couple of years there's been a lot of less exciting games that they've been in, involved in than in the past but the thing that's exciting me personally the most about 2019 with the Catalan Dragons is the game in Barcelona um, as a Wigan fan I, I'm going to be there and uh, I'm very excited about it what do you think that means to the, the profile of the of the team within the wider Catalan region um, are you excited for that as well yeah I think it's um... I mean, yeah, as scheduling wise, the weekend before Magic, I suppose you'd say, well, it might be, but I think they'll get. Yeah, forget about that. Wow. Well, I'm not going to speculate on a crowd. <laughs> I'm too I think that, to worry that, about that, James. <laughs> exactly. It'll be a great crowd. You know, Barcelona's fantastic. You've got all the resorts. And I suppose that, you know, the people that go to Perpignan who stay along that bit of the coast in sort of Lorette de Mar and places like that and Calella, they've, they've all got that. They can still stay oh, there because going, it's, yeah. it's, it's an equal distance south to, to Barcelona. So. That little bit of sun, the beach, I think that, that it will be fantastic. I think that the French Federation cancelling all domestic games that whole weekend to make sure that no one's got an excuse not to go to the game and, and you know, show French Rugby League and the Catalans in, in a positive light. I think that's brilliant. Well, it just has and, to get uh, 26,000 to be the best attended one-off regular season game in the history of Super League. And, and that's a re... With what they're putting in place... Um, oh, that's really with the good. amount of Wigan fans that I know are going over as well, and neutral fans that I know are, are going out, I think that it's re- it's realistic if they priced it right. That's that's very realistic to to bring some in. The point you make about the fr- French games being um, called off that weekend so that everyone can get behind the game, I think that's a, a great point, James. <laughs> Right, yeah, so apologies again that we that we missed the end of that due to some poor connection issues. Um, thanks, James, though, for coming back on. And uh, like I said before, check out ukcatalansdragons.blogspot.com to uh, see more of James's stuff about the Dragons. And uh, 
and yeah thank you to you all for listening too uh, keep your eyes and ears out for more similar shows as we look uh, to cover off the rest of the teams we've got London coming up um, nothing for Salford I'll keep saying that until anyone who listens wants to do something about Salford <laughs> but nothing for Salford uh, but get in touch if you do want to do something on Salford we'll pick something up somewhere along the way if you want more SLP in your life you can find us at Super League Pod on Twitter and Instagram facebook.com forward slash Super League Pod or email Super League Pod at gmail.com you can also get more SLP content on our blog which you'll find at Super League Pod dot Com, and you can find other episodes of the show and subscribe through Spreaker, iTunes or YouTube and on the Podcast Addict app. You can also find us on the Leadcast Android app with some other top rugby league listens or rugbyleaguemedia.com as well. I uh, just want to thank you all finally for listening again and until you hear from us next time, keep enjoying and supporting the greatest game of all, Rugby League. <laughs>